This is the Darren Green Show. What up? I'm Darren Green, and this is the Derek Doll, and you are listening to the Darren Green Show, coming to you loud, live, and in color for another stellar podcast once again. If this is the first time you're hearing our voices, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. And as always, follow me at TDGS Official on Twitter and Instagram, and you can also follow uh, the Derek Doll on Instagram at the Derek Doll. And Facebook as well, too. Prince Derek Doll. All right. And we have a guest. Okay. Yay. One of my good friends that, uh, that I first met when I first transferred here to NJCU, Twyla. Hi. What's up? <clears throat> Ooh. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Bad introduction. Nothing. Oh, my God. It's so... Okay. I know I've been, like, level since I came here, but I mm-hmm. can't wait. I'm just, like, happy that I'm seeing you because, like, it's been, like, I a know, whole it's been year. A minute, yeah. It's been a whole year. <laughs> But um, I'm Twyla. Yes, I used to go to NJCU. Um, me and Darren, we like, well, he had his own podcast before mm-hmm. I did. And I was like, you know, he came to me one day. We were like in a cafe, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were in a cafeteria and my friend was like, oh, I know somebody that just came here. And he's doing a podcast. And he was like, you know, I know you were thinking about doing your podcast. Mm-hmm. And my podcast I have now is live and direct. And we started off, it first started off with like four people. Mm-hmm. It was me, um, Darren, Ryan, and Danielle. And yes. then we used to have a reoccurring um, guest, which is Bianca. Mm-hmm. She goes here, I think, still. And it just went from there. And then I basically made lab, Live and Direct basically what I have now, which is like by myself, along with two other women. Right. Named Jada and Candace, And we're looking for like, you know, reoccurring guests and like artists. So basically what the show is not how it used to be before. It used to basically mm-hmm. be like um, a show where we like, you know, talk about like black excellence and talk about hot topics and like prohibited, you know, topics. But we still do that now. But now basically what it is is that we bring artists or curators or any like black or POC creatives to come on the show and talk about their right. artistry. And that's it. That's what's up. So it's not like the same element that we did. It's not. The, it's the same element, but the third segment is yeah. basically like the creative or curator or any mm-hmm. person of any like creative work comes on the show and talks about their work. Yeah. And I will say that like it was when we met, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I first transferred here. Mm-hmm. I ain't know nobody. I didn't. Yeah. You know, and I'm kind of socially awkward, too, mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Like, I don't really know how to make new people. So when I met you, it's kind of like I met all of you guys and it was cool. Then. After the next semester, everybody left, and I was like, oh, no. I had to start all over again. Yeah, everyone, like, Uh literally everyone left. And everything you said about this school, ciao. Oh. (laughs) Well, that's why I'm transferring. I mean, I'm kind of sad that I left when I did. I should have waited a little bit longer because I'm trying to transfer to Montclair. Yeah. um, And I'm taking classes at Essex County. But it's just, I'm much happier. Watch it with Montclair, though, because my girl, Bianca, she was on Live and Direct as well. Mm Mm-hmm. She told me that she tried to transfer there, and it was about to make her be a freshman again. Ooh. Well, it's either Montclair or Keene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm uh, looking into. Keen. If I'm gonna try Keene, <laughs> but I still, the, I've been to the communications building of Montclair, and uh-huh. it's really like. Oh, I've been there. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness, they have a whole news room, uh, news room, and they <clears> like <throat> they on TV and a radio studio. But I'm gonna try uh, Keen, but yeah, that's it. Well, <laughs> I hope you. I hope everything goes well with you, and especially from your podcast. Mm-hmm. I was waiting on it, like when you said you was making it, and then I was like, "Oh my god, I can't wait to like yeah. have you on my show, and then you know have you do a little." Mm-hmm. Uh, where they where can they find it? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can find it on any platform, which is yeah. SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to probably having other pl- platforms, but as of now, that's where it's on. It's on there, and yeah. yeah. And I want you to be on there too. Like, I yes, know it's I been want. Slow. Yes, I can come to you. Yeah, I'm saying it's, or, yeah. it's been real slow, but I'm as of now, like I'm working mm-hmm. on episode two. Episode three is going to come out this week, so two episodes will come out this week. Okay, that's so, good. Yeah. See, I wish I can do that, but I talk about stuff that's kind of like reoccurring. Mm-hmm. Like it has to be out at a certain time, and because it will get old. It will, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it will get old, but. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. So you're gonna be here talking, but talking hot topics with us. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Good. Was, well, welcome, Twyla. I can't you. wait to hear your podcast as well. Thank you. So how so was you your ready? week? How was my week? Mm-hmm. So uh, I took a week off last mm-hmm. week because I had a training for work, and um. It's a community health health worker training, mm-hmm. right? And I was part of it for like for maybe two months, and so we finally graduated. We got our certificate, so Ooh. I'm a certified community healthcare worker. 
specializing yes. in HIV AIDS reduction and prevention and counseling. Congrats. And um, besides work, I attended my friend Michael Devon. Mm-hmm. He had uh, he's the creative director for artistic uh, passion and purpose, and they had a fall fashion extravaganza, and it was absolutely amazing. I know you saw my outfit. My yes, little, my little black patent leather with the with the white poofy sleeves or whatever. That was dope. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was there to present an award to um, Sharonda Wheeler, or Love, who's the president of Newark Gay Pride, mm-hmm. uh, presenting her with the Community Leader of the Year Award. So I had a really, really wonderful time. But other than that, it's just been, you know, you know, just another week out here trying to survive. Mm. Yeah, what about you, though, Mr. Birthday Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We I just turned twenty two yes. last Thursday. Mm. Yes, the I, big two two. The big yes. two two. Okay, you get what I'm saying. I went back home. I had to go back home to my town and you know hang out with some people. I went to Philly. Mm. I ended up having to stay out there, child, because I was with a friend. Well, I was with my best friend, and then she had to leave because she had like little situations at home. And then I met up with my friend that's from my old school, so we kind of had like a little reunion, and we were. At a club, we went to. I don't know if you ever heard of this, but it's called the Glow Bar. Well, Woody's. You ever heard of that? No, that's in Philly. It's in Philly. I, I haven't been to Philly in like six years. Mm. I never. I, went. I, I went for work. It's fun so out I, there. I've never been to like mm. actually enjoy Philadelphia. Right, right, right. So we got to make that a, a thing. Yeah, make it a thing. We got to go to Woody's because that is. It was a fun club. It had like a little downstairs area where the bar was, and upstairs it was like the dance rooms, and it was like separate too because they was playing like the old nineties hip hop in one room. And that's where all the black people were, and then they was playing like the techno pop and all the remixes. And oh, all. they was trying to give house yeah. party tees from like Webster Hall. Yeah, and it was like I was in space, uh-huh. like it had lasers and stuff. I'm like, what is this? Uh-huh. My first club experience, really, because I never. You know, been and all that, but it was fun, mm. and it was a gay bar. Well, historic. I would say historically gay because I've seen so many straight people there. Oh yeah, the straight people love gay spaces right now. Yeah, it's, like yeah. sorry to say, but I mean, because I have been to the gay bar, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm a true believer. Like you know, if you're gonna go into spaces that wasn't really meant for you, mm-hmm. right. respect the space. Right, that's it, and know the meaning, and not even the meaning, the history behind the space and people that are in there. Right, yeah. but yeah. But, but hey, you know, I'm I guess you have fun. Yeah. yeah. I did have a lot it. of fun. Yeah. Did you have cake? No, I didn't have cake. No, I don't. I'm on a. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> it's like, at what least you mean you had a birthday cake. with no cake. No, I'm on a low carb diet and I'm trying to lose weight because I'm getting too big now. I need to be back to. Well, I never was back to nothing, but <laughs> <laughs> I need to lose weight because I can't be this big. I cannot. I don't. Mm, mm, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, a little slice don't hurt nobody nah I'm good Mm. I always have cake on my birthday every year right that's the one day you actually say fuck your diet it's about me feeling good today this 24 hours belongs to me (laughs) and I'm gonna do whatever I want to do on my birthday you can starve yourself for the rest of the year but on that day (laughs) bitch I'm getting cake peach cobbler ice cream whatever I want oh yeah Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. well I guess colonizer day (laughs) oh I mean, it is what it is, but <laughs> that's the other day where I would like say screw my diet, I guess. But I'm right, right, right. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going. to Well, all I got to do is just not eat carbs because the low carb diet is what really builds fat. And okay. I feel like a lot of people say, "Oh, cut out meat or be vegan." Da, 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 da. Vegan, it's a lot of starch in there. Really? So mm-hmm. if you're taking in a lot of starch, you're not really going to lose weight. You're going to be healthy. I mean, vegans to be healthy, that's you know, that's a good thing. But um, you have to have a low starch diet. That's what really loses weight. That's what really stays in your body. Starch. Mm-hmm. So. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been trying. I've been relapsing, child. I'll be having milk sometimes. I'll be like, damn. <laughs> Not the milk. Uh-huh. Sometimes I'll be having like my little breakfast sandwiches because you know I love me a bacon, egg, and cheese. I had to cut that and it's 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 doing. <laughs> Listen, whatever You're food trying. you don't mm-hmm. want to eat or you can't eat, just send it to me because I'm actually trying to gain uh, yeah, 10 Oh pounds. yeah, same. Ugh. So just send me whatever food that y'all, you don't want. Mm, I, I weigh one hundred and ten to... pounds. I need to at least like I'll be like, you know what I mean? People be wishing y'all had that we had that like <laughs> Look, Listen, it's hard for y'all to gain. It's hard for me to lose. We Why can't we have what we, we want? We always want what we don't have. Yes. Right? But I'm going to get mine regardless, okay? <laughs> and I am too. Protein bars, <laughs> shakes, fat uh-huh. transplants. Just I'm By 35, I'm going to have mm-hmm. my African warrior body. And I'm putting should. that in the universe because that's what I want. Okay. I'm tired of being built like a 17-year-old. This shit is for the birds. I'm grown as hell, okay? I got grown folks' bills. I want a grown folks' body. I deserve. <laughs> I deserve. That's right. right. I deserve to be. 
<laughs> Shoot. Oh, Lord. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about your weeks or whatever? Because we're going to get into the little intro and warm up before we get into the hot topics. Not at all. Let's get into it. Let's get into these hot topics. But yes. before we get into these hot topics, here's a word from our sponsors. Kanye West back on his bullshit. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. He is back on his bullshit. Let me tell. Let me talk about it. Let's talk about it. Now, for those who don't know, he's been taking Sunday services and ceremonies all over the country with his latest being in Salt Lake in the Salt Lake City. <laughs> Kanye West decided to go on a rant defending his pro Trump comments and told the audience that a Republican president abolished slavery in the United States. Now, obviously, Abraham Lincoln was the president and he was a part of the Republican Party, but it was not the same Republican Party as that we know today. Right. Everybody knows that. Well, he don't know. I mean, he not everybody. This country is. <laughs> Listen, people who don't know better always fall for the same traps. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in this era of Trump, he is he is playing on people's ignorance. The people that don't know better, mm-hmm. like that's where he gets his that's his support base. That's where you know his 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 core group is, and so they'll eat up whatever you tell them. Without fact checking, I'm like y'all didn't go to 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 world history class. Y'all didn't take U.S. government. You don't know American history that the Republican Party then became the Democratic Party. Party. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it is just so <laughs> crazy. And also now, whether it's good or bad, Abraham Lincoln didn't free the slaves because they thought slavery was bad. They freed the slaves so that they could be able to migrate black people up north to industrialize the country. So it was a it was a war move. It, it had nothing to exactly. do with what they thought black people should do and be and free and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, they thought it, it was, was it a, was cheaper, right? Because because the yeah. cost of slavery was expensive. Exactly, let and them free. It will uh-huh. cost you yeah. tax, so we can tax them. Mm. And they'll benefit more. It's more it's, men during the war that they'll have. Like they don't want to have all their white men to be killed. So right. let's have black men be killed too. Mm-hmm. Like they already know that they were itching for something to be part of and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so like let's let them be part of it that's just, what it's about I just hate to see Kanye West go down this road honey well we I I've been checked him out a long time ago and I used to be a big Kanye fan mm-hmm. and it's just like as soon as he like I had sorry to say but as soon as he married Kim I just felt he was gone. Yeah. Something. Get out. The movie Get Out was for Kanye. <laughs> that was like Kim Kardashian be telling that she wanted to teach their kids black history Oh she's not God. gonna do that shit. She's it's not gonna so do that. It's so sad. I hate to see it. Mm. No. Hate to see it. And mm. you know what's crazy about this is that Kanye West, when he was on his rise, I was right. I was so excited to see a a black genius like being there and speaking and standing up for us. Like that whole iconic moment about George Bush hates black people moment. Mm-hmm. I lived true. for that. Um because I felt like he was operating in his truth. But I just feel like after his mom died, I feel like he had a psychotic break mm-hmm. that he has not yeah. recovered from. My mom says that too. Like it's because his mother died and he just hasn't been the same. He needs black women around him that love him mm. and to hug him and to just be like, brother, we, ne- I need you to, to, to get out the sauce right now. Like yeah. this is, that's a, mm. but he's able to make money off of those white people too. So I mean? don't, I don't want to get too deep because I don't know mm. if we have enough time for that. But like, we got, I, we got time. time I just I have a disclaimer about that because I always hear that. Not to like discredit what you're saying, but like I always hear like um, people say, "Oh, you know, Kanye needs black people, a black woman around him." Or mm. if there's a you know quote unquote brother that's lost, he needs black woman around him. And it's like we're always there to save other black men or save people. We're always inclusive. Mm. But I feel like when it comes to our space, just as black women in general, like. No one's really there for us. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like yeah. the black gays are there for you. We, yes, you guys, <laughs> we are, honey. You guys are. No, most definitely. It's a really deep conversation. Like this whole st- this whole talk is like basically geared for like another time because mm-hmm. I really feel as though like it's just not shown. Like we're always there. Like for example, three black women made the Black on um, Lives Matter movement. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it's very, and they're not even from here. <laughs> like they're not from America. Right. So it just shows how. We're always trying to be there for black people in general, but black men specifically, and we just don't, in the same breath, get the same treatment. Like, and we see that with Kanye. And we see that with Kanye. It's like, um, like I said, he needs a black woman around him, and like maybe that is true. And his black woman that he had was his mom. Like literally, that was the yeah. only person he had was his mother. Yeah. And once you lose that power or that cord for you, mm-hmm. it's kind of like you feel lost. You know what I'm saying? So right. So I wasn't just saying the black. Well. First of all, black woman is God. So when I say that Kanye needs a black woman around him, mm-hmm. I feel like that 
when his mom died, he lost his connection to God. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, you're right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, and now he's just, he's clinging to what's familiar to him. And I think he fell into the lifestyle. Like, this is the lifestyle you want it. You're mm-hmm. in it. You're immersed in it. So now it's about, you know, whatever you can do to to keep attention <clears throat> and collect that bag to take care of your kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that he understands the every time that he talks or moves or says something crazy, mm-hmm. it's going to get him attention. Mm-hmm. And Kanye, I don't feel like Kanye is as crazy as we think. No. I think yeah. he, I think he operates kind of like Donald Trump. But that's why they can relate. Say say stupid shit, get people talking, and then make an action that sticks. On Kanye's part, it's doing this Sunday service, getting people back, getting black people back into religion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and campaigning for a man that he relates to, that he looks up to, and putting money in his pocket because he's in a different tax right. bracket now. You have to yeah. remember, like, Kanye don't care about the... Kanye, does Kanye care about poor people? Because Kanye is not no. poor anymore. You see what I'm saying? And so he's got to make sure that he's still making his money. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. And, you know, so that's why I, I, when I look at, at the Kardashian curse or the Kardashian clan, like, I they're all know. about attention and making money. I don't take anything they do seriously. And the people that right. do, I just kind of look at them like... At all. <laughs> at all. Right. You know, so... People praise him. I don't know. I just pray for Kanye, and I pray for people who... Right. Yeah. I, I, I wish them all the best. And I hope that he Period. gets his facts <laughs> straight next time. And, you know, Whoopi said it best. Next time you want to say something, read about it. Ooh. See about it. I read. Like, I like, know Kanye's not stupid, but he knows that he he knows that he's garn- garnered a stupid fan base now because see, of the smart people left. A yeah. lot of these celebrities got this God complex, and anything that comes out their mouth is pure gold. Right. Now, he was always the one, you know, they always wanted him to be on their award shows to give, like, his little speeches or whatever and talk, and then now it's coming back to bite us because the shit that he's saying is just like, what the hell? Like, what is this? Those cult services. I mean, I heard, I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those cult services. <laughs> well, aren't yeah. they all kind of like cult services? No, but look, if you want to boil it down, if you, mm-hmm. you know, want to get real. But like, I know a girl, she was, um, she went to one of them, like, and she says like, it's a really good experience. Like, even if you're not a Kanye fan, mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. if you were yeah. just to go there, you would feel like, okay, you're familiar with, especially like if you grew up in the Baptist church, um, yeah. Episcopalian, you know what I'm saying? Like it's the power of music. It's like, it's just a music and the feeling of it. So, but he just, mm-hmm. I'm not here for Kanye. No more. We, yeah, was, people, we pe- was rocking with it though. We was rocking with the, with the Sunday services until this. Wait, until he remixed an Aaliyah song. Oh, what? Then he remixed, um, one in a million. Your love is a one in a million. And he put and it in a gospel, gospel song? song. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's quitting secular music and he's going to do gospel now. Um, I just want New Body featuring Nicki Minaj and then I'm going to be done with Kanye. Because <laughs> that is my that is my so, song and I've been listening to it like pirate. Ooh, let me stop. I'm still on Pirating. good form. Ooh, but wait. Good, oh, good form was my, <laughs> I'm was still my on shit. Good form. But wait, yes. before we move on from Kanye though, uh-huh. and we talked about music as far as going to the service and liking it and, ba- and about the power of music. So, um, my my grandfather is as a pastor, and I grew up in mm-hmm. Catholic church, mm-hmm. and my family's Methodist, and I've always been kind of enshrouded in religion, and I study it because I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing in my daily life, mm-hmm. what I'm connected to, I need to make sure that it's aligned with my spirit. I can tell. And as a musician, as an artist, I understand the power of music. And one thing I will say, let us not forget that Lucifer was supposed was the fallen angel but he was also the minister of music mm. and music is vibrational and it's energy so we have to be very careful of the music we're, we're taking in my yeah. favorite artist is Whitney Houston and I remember her EPK mm-hmm. in her electronic press kit before her last album she always said that you know what music didn't change people changed the music so it's very dark now and me I'm just thinking like oh it's pop music and it's blah 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 but it made mm-hmm. me it made me think about like, wait a minute, what are we taking in and how is it ch- how is it shifting the culture? Because these people are influencers and mm. they're influencers for a reason. What are we being influenced for? What are we being prepared for? And and how powerful will how po- Kanye is a tool when I see Con- like when I think about uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce with mm-hmm. the Obama administration. Right. Okay. Right. Kanye wanted that Kanye vied for that same spot in that same space with Trump. So anytime there's a major anything going on with policy, I don't even think about that. Anytime you hear something yeah. that Trump has done or said or something, a new piece of information comes out, keep your eye on Kanye West news. Keep your eye on it. The timing. Just mm-hmm. keep your eye on it. I'm just saying. 
Okay. I ain't well, say what I'm just saying. Pay attention. No, that <laughs> just got me a little shook a little bit, only right. because I, I didn't really think of it in that mm-hmm. in that context or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but even when you said with the music, it's the hurts that's in the music that makes people vibration. Like the music they play on the radio makes people vibrational. I don't listen to radio. Yeah. Like I don't at all. Like I haven't listened to radio in like I don't know how many years, but. So whenever I'm in the car, I, I mean, I listen to it, but not like that. Yeah. yeah. No. And you'd be wondering, like, why you got anxiety? Like, why is my anxiety coming out of nowhere? Why do I feel low out of nowhere? It's because of the music that you're listening mm-hmm. to. Exactly. The vibrations you're letting into your body. Mm-hmm. That's why I always start my day with some ratchet music, because if you try to <laughs> test me, <laughs> be going into work like, you know what? Right. I'm not even. Yo, I listen to Meg Thee Stallion, <laughs> WAB, when I walk in. <laughs> you know, I've actually been feeling kind of sexy at work because mm. of. I've been listening to Ari Lennox every, I every love her. day. I was in her last night. I was doing my blog. I was like, wait. I love her. I'm sorry. Like, I had to take a little yes. pause because like, I listened to her Tiny Desk, too. I don't know if you watched that already. Mm. I have to go watch it. No, you have to. It's really good. But she only performed like three songs. So, so I'm going to get into that. We're going to that. Okay, yeah. so that's it for Kanye. That's so, it for Kanye. Mm-hmm. Let's change the subject. Let's talk about Lil Nas. Ah, yeah. But let's talk about... Let's talk about my brother. Okay, like so him, Lil Nas but, X... He was in a he was in a couple of news child a couple of things. So the first thing I want to talk about it was he was recently in an interview with Gail, and he made comments of trying to pray the gay way when he was younger. Mm-hmm. This left social media with mixed reviews. I didn't want to talk about this in the beginning because it, I didn't feel like it was that serious. Like I've seen it before. Like I've lived it. Like, like yeah, I can understand why you would think that. And then to see people on social media and one of the people in my uh, media club told me like no we got to talk about this because people on social media is really saying a lot of crazy stuff saying he's like oh he's he's doing a tour now because he's going all around to these interview outlets Mm -hmm. and like they're asking the questions and he's just saying you know now but he but he also said that I don't want to be the gay um, activist right he didn't say that exactly but he said he didn't want to be like an activist about of lgbt okay. which is kind of making people be like okay well you're saying that but you're doing a tour of interviews <laughs> but i think that's not it may not be the intention but it's always going to come up because it's a hot topic like mm-hmm. he is he for this generation he's the first successful mm-hmm. black openly gay mm-hmm. rapper yeah to be known that's mm-hmm. a big deal not, I mean, you, you know, we have other gay rappers like Kicks the Killer and stuff like that, but yeah. they haven't broken into mainstream the same way that like he not, has. Not, mm-hmm. And so when you when you have an opportunity to have to hold court with Lil Nas, you're going to talk about those things because they did have impact. Um, yeah. And I just think that and the one thing I do admire about him is that he's so comfortable with himself. Like even I, I follow him on Twitter and he's just so comfortable. Like he. He's so cute. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. okay, you ask me, I'm going to leave the answer, and that's that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and as a as an openly bisexual performer, I think it's great, you know? Yeah. It's part of your art. Um, well, I want to say part of your art. You're the artist, and being able to separate the artist from the art, but yeah. people are going to, people fuck with you because they love you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And I think he's authentic, and it's it's just going to be part of the, the discussion. And I Until think he that, decides to yeah. say, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Right, because I feel like he was like that in the beginning, but then now I feel like he's starting to see that he's making an influence, and now he's like, well, you know what? Maybe he, at first he said he wasn't trying to be an activist, and maybe he's like subconsciously trying to go into that area. Yeah, so which he like doesn't have to said, be the most political act that you can make mm-hmm. is is to be yourself. Yeah, you know, so him being there. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah, my, my friend Anya said the same thing. She was like, him being his presence is activism. Yeah, by just being in the room, you're you're making. Uh, a statement, yeah, you know. So, and he had his uh, Panini song got a remix by with the baby. So that's like stepping in the right direction. Like these rappers, these male rappers are starting to work with him, which is good. I hope it's not like because see now I feel like okay now you know mm-hmm. one. So yeah, let's do this for some business stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, it is a business. It is a business. Period. I mean, music is a business. Mm-hmm. business. But I see what you're saying. Like, they're not trying to do it because he's the hot thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's not like they actually want to work with him genuinely. And because he's talented. Yeah. So, and he's talented. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I mean, me personally, it wasn't even a thing until he came out. Like, when he came out um, just as Lil Nas X, nobody thought about if he was gay. Yeah. And so people started that. It was part of the spam community. Well, even in, twi- in Twitter, it was like, he was a bar. He's, he's a bar. Yeah, the bar. Yeah. The bar. Nas, he was Lil Nas Mirage. <laughs> I mean, so that was a given. Like, low yeah. key. I mean, even though straight guys can be barbs, too, but I don't know none. Um, 
the Kins is okay. But the anyway, kins. <laughs> the Kins, the Barb's and the Kins. But anyway, yeah. I don't know. I just I hope I hope the best for him, and I hope that you know, like I said, it's just mm. like the stuff that the people that's now trying to come into his close circles are for genuine reasons. And I hope so. For just like you know, clout. And I don't wouldn't I wouldn't put that on the baby because I feel like the baby is not like that. Yeah, he don't give me that vibe. Yeah, honestly about him. Mm-hmm. Just look up for Bobby Light, so. <laughs> Huh. No, but I was about to bring him up because I feel like he's like that's the only gay rapper that I know that has bars. You no, know? I wasn't saying like that. He's the only gay rapper that you know that has bars. What? I don't listen to. A, well, let me rephrase. I don't listen to a lot of gay rappers. So I wasn't I talking do, about that. I was. He does have bars. Weird. I'm not saying he's okay. Well, let me let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. First of all, I got bars. He ain't the only one. But <laughs> he's the only one that I know of. That I know of. Can I can I say that? Now? <laughs> who who to my uh, Nas or Bobby Lights? I'd be like, she got bars. I mean, he really. Be I like this little song he put out. He got arrested. I wasn't even thinking about that. No, the one. The, what about that one that was when he was at the radio station and he was and he, he was like he was going in. Like I was like, oh shit, this is this is good. Oh, I was saying for Lil Nas to look out for Lil uh, Bobby. Lights. Oh yeah, because Bobby Lights was trying to get with him at the VMA <laughs> Awards. It, it, he's messy, but he does. He, I mean, his music is kind of dope. I thought that was gonna be. Oh god. Okay. Okay. All right now, Derek. I, I didn't say a word. <laughs> I didn't say a thing, man. He took off his jacket a little bit. I did not mean nothing about that, honey. It got hot in here. He did. Bobby's cute, though. I say he's cute. Yeah. Um, As as an artist, I think that... um, I feel... Do you know when I look at Bobby Lights, I see him as, like, moving into the lane of being, like, a male Cardi B. And that's, let the that only, that's, the only, that's the only thing that kind of makes me, he like... He can't stop but being But see, messy. Cardi wasn't in the... Cardi was in the drama mm. when she was on Love & Hip Hop, but when she got out, she she does... She comes for people that come for her. She don't be starting with nobody like that. Um, it's only if no, someone does true. something to her. She really doesn't start with nobody. Now she come go, for her. Now she goes one to ten ten, which yeah. is an issue. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't come for like. Come on now. Okay. All right. Well, no, no, no. Well, well, since she brought Cardi up, <laughs> oh Lord, let's so, talk about it. Let's so, talk. Let's move on from Lil Nas mm-hmm. and his interview with Gail King. Which, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, no wait, it hasn't come. Has it gone out yet? Or they was just doing the the clips. Or like the the transcript got leaked or something like that. You know they always promote the interviews before they the interview already out. came out. But it came out right. Yeah. See, y'all, I've been so busy. I haven't. <sighs> I feel so left out the circle. <laughs> um, but we can also move on yeah. to Little Nas and Cardi B in this lawsuit. Um, that's yes. uh, looming over them right now. So they got hit with a lawsuit by their song Rodeo. And it's a ripoff to the record producer Brandon Lee says that he wrote a song called I don't even know what this is called. Gwen X Don Lee 4-142. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I wasn't even going (laughs) to. And it was kind of we listened to it. Right. We We listened to both songs. And I mean, it kind of sounds similar. If you know what Rodeo sounds like, the song sounds pretty similar. But that's that's what it's kind of getting into. It's like songs that sound similar now. It's like, oh, can I sue now? You should have had that queued up. You ain't got it queued up over there? I ain't got it queued up. The computer is closed, honey. What about that one? It can pick up the loop. Man. I mean, I guess we can. Okay, hold on. You can try. You better hold. Put that, move that mic down there. Listen, y'all. And you all can, you can be the judge whether or not this song. I got the computer up on the dang mic. Okay, let's get this started. If you were on a jury, tell me if they sound the same. So tell them which one you're going to play first. We're going to play Rodeo by Lil Nas X Feature and Cardi B. Yeah, I need to hear this because I never heard it. <laughs> Right. Okay. Now this is the. All right. Now this is their song. This is um broad day. Right. Right. That's broad, about to play. It's right. Broad day. Yep. We got to really hear it in the beginning. You hear it. Mm-hmm. The background music. The background music. That's all. It, all right, I'm about to turn it off. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think of TGS it, official. You, you it was hear, a little bop. It's the same. <laughs> right. They both bops because it's the same song. Mm-hmm. But what you, well, you think it's the same song? It's the same song. It's just reproduced. I mean, so they have a happens, case. But that, I mean, yes, it's the. This is no different than when. I hope you're well, not gonna say Robin Thicke. No, I because that, that was verbatim. Yeah, that was that was. I don't know. They kind of tried that a little bit, but. I will say, remember when Beyonce had Halo when Halo dropped, and uh-huh. then Kelly Clarkson was pissed at the producer because it was the same as Almost Gone, Already um, already Gone, or something like that? It's the same beat. 
it's the same production. Okay. So with that, I think it's just it's the same sample, and you can definitely hear the influence in the in in rodeo. But you sue the can producer the or sue the label. First of all, because he didn't make that song, he did not create that song from scratch. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> you 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 don't. Okay, so this is how this works in in music. Mm-hmm. Um, as a producer, um, you have pu- it's called publishing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're not just suing the artist who performed on it. You're suing the people who have publishing rights to it. Oh, okay. So if I'm on the label and I wrote to it and I have publishing rights to this song and I'm getting paid from it, guess what? You're liable of getting sued as well. Oh, so they getting sued too? Because okay. that means that the that means that the sample hadn't been cleared. Mm-hmm. And it and it, it violates a creative license. So, I mean, if I was on the jury, I'd be like, okay, well, they sound the same. It's just sound like two different people on it. Which one came out first? Who mm-hmm. holds the copyright right, and who right. holds the publishing rights on it? I gotta choose. If I was a singer, I'd be like, okay, I'll be talking to my producer. Like, okay, so this is completely one hundred percent just your created. You didn't listen to nothing else, right? You didn't hear this from nowhere else because we can we can because Lil Nas X could have easily just gave them like a something for it could have probably could the label could have just bought an exclusive rights to it yeah they could have but I'm nobody wanted to do it but sometimes but you have to think too these major mm-hmm. labels sometimes they're they're really sharky like they'll go on soundcloud or they'll go on youtube and they'll find these artists mm-hmm. or these the um these songs that that nobody's gonna hear Oh, and yeah. they'll be like okay well who produced this beat mm-hmm. let me go buy this let me go buy it because i know this artist is just rapping over tag beats they'll buy it and then they'll own it and there's nothing you can do because mm. you didn't protect yourself and um you What's, know what is Lil Nas X's label hate to see it <laughs> I hate to see Literally. it what is his label I'm gonna check that oh, let me figure that out I'm, I didn't even hear the whole song I don't even know why Cardi B's on there mm-hmm. did she bring him out she brought him out during one of her performances and that was his first time performing with her and I think he performed Rodeo and then they brought out Billy Cyrus and then that was like right after um, Old Town Road got uh, went oh, number one. He's Colombian. Okay, who's Col- oh he's with Colombia. He's Columbia Records. I yeah. heard stories about. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a part of Sony. So, mm. you know they 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 love they they are the. I thought I was about to say Atlantic. I'm like mm, exactly Atlantic. <laughs> Child, listen. That's what another. That's why you know that's what brought me up here. It's supposed to be negotiated with Atlantic. What? Yeah. What? And then that, gonna... that didn't go. That didn't go how it was supposed to go. But we'll save that for another conversation because I'm I'm back on my. Okay. And when it when it's time, the truth will come out. And oh. We'll just let that be that. Oh, if I had a, a bomb button. <laughs> to freedom. <laughs> to freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, anyway. Oh my god. So since we're talking about since we brought up Cardi B in the mix, mm-hmm. okay. So Cardi B goes ape shit on Instagram, okay? So to promote her new uh, Netflix hip-hop talent competition series, Rhythm and Flow, she's been going around and doing press, okay? Mm-hmm. Press, 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 press. <laughs> <laughs> But when Access Hollywood posted a clip of a chat on, the, like, I think it was last Thursday, mm-hmm. Cardi didn't like what she's seen, and especially with the headline saying, Cardi B admits baby culture calls someone else mommy because she works so much. Now, after that, she went on uh, Instagram Live, and she was livid. Like, I didn't think Cardi can ever... I, I never thought she can get that loud. Because I listened to a lot of her rants, and sometimes... It was a, lately, I've been agreeing with some of them. I don't know. I forgot which one I did agree with, but I'll be like, that's the only time I agree with it. Oh, it was the one with the um with the, with the the Jermaine Dupree shit, when he was talking about all female uh, rappers. Rapper, they, sit down, boy. She's never been that upset, though. But this one? And then yeah. it was like... Because when I heard it, I didn't know about the story yet. I'm like, okay, so something really must have happened. Like, Offset must have cheated again or some other girl <laughs> done came out. <laughs> I'm like, I look Whoa. at, I look on my girl Impressive channel because that's what I watch. That's what I get my tea from. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm, I mm, love her. I, I like know. Impressive. In Paris dope. Milan. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, so I was looking at that and I'm like, I mean, and then she said that they augmented the interview to make it sound like she called, but she said it. She, she said it, but then you kind of explained it to me before we started recording. Context matters. Context okay. matters. Yeah, that's the only way, that's the only thing I'll agree with her on is that when mm-hmm. you edit something or when you um, when you put something out there, you know, have to mm-hmm. think about the context. And I think that when she said it feels whack, I don't think she was saying like it feels whack to me because this is happening to me. But ha- having your child call someone else mommy feels whack. I'm sure that as a as a mm-hmm. caregiver, mm-hmm. it would feel whack. And she was she's right about that. I just think that. 
She said it in a sense of, I don't want my child to yeah. call somebody else mom, but she didn't say not that. That, my, that culture calls yeah. my mom mommy. You know, I don't, that's not what she was trying to communicate. <sighs> However, comma. But I'm glad that she made the announcement that she's not going to do no more press because I watched that live. <laughs> Have you seen it? Did you see it? I saw a snippet of it. You need to see the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Now, she was mad. She's she got some vile things. She gave me, she, you know, she oh, gave, yeah, I she know gave, what, I know she about the, mm, I know she, she about gave the, me mm-hmm. the performance that I needed. You know, this is the Cardi that we love. Seen her rowdy, you know, are you do- we love all that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, there's a market for it. What I did not like is when she started talking about, I hope your mother gets AIDS, bitch. Or I hope you're you not know, like, mm. for me, like, I know that for some people, some, I was reading the comments. They were like, you know, well, I hate it when, when people push your buttons and then tell you how far you can go. And I was like, yeah, but she's an adult. And she, at this point, like, you're getting engaged in politics, like, with the whole Bernie Sanders thing. Like, you're trying to elevate your platform. And I just feel like you've got, you, you can be the realest bitch, but you still have to have some type of decorum. Okay. And understand boundaries. And I said, and considering the fact that you have a lot of gay fans and you know how that stigma affects that part of the community. And maybe because I Mm -hmm. work in the field, Mm -hmm. I just felt like, okay, maybe, maybe she is just a bird. And there is nothing that, from that moment, she's canceled. From like, I, I I fuck with some of the beats that she's been on. You know, I think they write really good music mm-hmm. for her, and they dress her really nice. Girl. <laughs> I mean, but I just did not. I didn't like that. So I that was the yeah. last straw for you. I just felt it was very irresponsible. There was for a because it was more stuff she said before that. I'm Dude. like, that's the last straw for many. Oh, people? when I, oh no, I, I mean, I was th- no mm-hmm. another. My eyebrows started raising around the time she's like, when I see you, I'm gonna spit on you. Like from the back of my throat. I was like, first of all. You're going to be in court again mm-hmm. if you spit on any of these reporters. Because that's illegal in certain... That's assault. The that's New assault. York came out, just the New York came out in her period. Like, they talk like that. I don't know if they actually mean what they say. This bitch threw her shoe at Nicki Minaj, oh, okay? Yeah, she's, she's, she's capable, tried, she's capable tried, of anything. On she's capable of anything. And my thing is, like, you're just, you're... And with you being in a court case right now, you're you're not thinking clearly. Like, I know that somebody, don't, talk, don't play with my child, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But you're on Instagram Live. If that's how you feel, then... You have people on your team that can write a letter to access Hollywood. You can get them to, to pull that. There are so many things. Where you can, is your publicist? What is she doing? She doesn't Precious? have one. That girl, that, that girl that was fighting at the Harper's Bazaar. Isn't Precious? She, they're this one and the same. So why would you have a publicist that's Child, basically like you? Precious. Child. I, but I just feel like they like these kind of moments. Yeah, they do. Cardi don't need more press, but she does. Because the field is getting <laughs> very... The field is getting very... <laughs> listen. Sweet when it was... You know what I'm saying? You got Saweetie. Hitting the top Hawaii. ten, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Her career's not gonna last long. I'm uh, sorry. Or Meg The Stallion. That's Meg is oh my god. Well, yeah. Lizzo uh, apparently Lizzo. Lizzo is a rapper. Um, so she's what? well, yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was weird, but yeah, she's a the rapper. Com- well, I mean, I guess. How am I supposed to get home? What the hell, my? I mean, she's a rapper. Yeah, and she and basically look, took her number. Her, uh, she's I guess the most the longest female rapper. longest female number one for a female. For so a she rapper. beat out Cardi's Bodak Yellow. So mm. yeah. yeah. And she's talented. She can sing. She writes. She can play the flute. And she can play the flute. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like she has, she's talented. I had many straws with Cardi with these, with these rants. It was really back in the summer when she came for black blogs, when a white blog came for your husband. That was the one that broke the story about offset and some legal issues. Mm-hmm. TMZ put that out. Okay. like And the shade room, well, not the shade room, because she, she, she silenced the shade room, but all the black blogs was, was reposting it. I'm like, um, honey, they ain't gonna come for the black blogs, child, because when the white blogs came out, put out your stuff, mm-hmm. we just reposted it. We doing our job. Right. Well, sh- and it's called the shade room. Oh, she silenced them. Apparently, I, I feel like she has something over that she can delete that page. But she's signed if- to Jewish money. So don't think that she's ever going to turn. She's not going to bite the hand that feeds her. Mm. Period. Oh. That's crazy. People, hey. people forget this is a business. These people, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like for Cardi in particular, I just think that she is such a big personality and she is yeah. so used to being who she is that when she jumped into this lane or when she was brought into into to the space of being right. a Hollywood celebrity and people loving her personality because she's so real and raw is that she didn't understand that this this is now packaging. You are an acquired asset yeah. to Atlantic Records and to 
to the other businesses and brands that are doing business with you. Mm -hmm. And you need to be conscious that you represent them everywhere. Every time you open your mouth, you're representing these things. Now, some there's no such thing as bad press because if you got people talking, you got the conversation, you can garner that attention. That's yeah. part of the 48 Laws of Power. If you've never read it, you should yeah. read it. Mm. But garnering that attention, if you're going to do all this, you, you, you should have been dropping a single. Yeah, and this is the, the time to drop a single. She's not a rapper we're, though. Like people keep forgetting that Cardi B does not care about rap music. But she, she said don't. that, out of and her she own said mouth. that of her own mouth. And it's like she's now she's focused on other things that would help her get revenue in other areas. It's, she and just that, wants and money. that goes and that goes into what um, the Joe Budden. Yeah, what he was saying, and which too. I found was so interesting because n- now they're doing it to you. Because right. na- na- so this is what this is turning into, because during Roman Reloaded. Mm-hmm. A lot of people had issues with Nikki going pop, right? Yeah. Well, I'm not a Nikki fan, but I have I was around that time. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. Know. yeah. So it's like so now so I I'm kind of <laughs> with Cardi with this. I'm 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 with Cardi with this though because I'm just like so now they're doing it to you. I mean, and it's happening again. Like, why can this stop? What about like female rappers going pop? Not even female rappers going pop, but what hap- what's going to happen next? Okay, now they get mad because she's going pop. What's going to be the next thing? Did they get mad at Kanye for making it away in heartbreak? Nope. No. Exactly. And That's my point. I think it's about women. Like, it's about women, yeah. Trying yeah, to like... control, control women, vo- female voices in, mm-hmm. in what spaces they can go into. Mm-hmm. And that's another reason why I feel like a lot of the female rappers that we have today, there is a level of respect that you have. Like, it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to give that respect to Nicki Minaj in that way because her being such a boss ass bitch that she is yeah. and just doing it because she because she she fought for that like yeah. I can go and, and, and dominate, this, dominate this space whether you like it or not because these people are going to buy it mm-hmm. I'm proving I'm proving to you mm-hmm. because people didn't believe it before when there was a little Kim who was trying really 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 hard to break in mainstream her mainstream success or her pop success height was Lady Marmalade working with white female Singers mm-hmm. like Pink and Christina, uh, uh, Christina Aguilera, and Maya, and well, Maya's not white, but okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is like mm-hmm. that was that was a big that was a mm-hmm. big deal. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it was a cultural moment. She couldn't sustain it. Yeah. Mm. It's a different. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has a chance. Everyone then, has that like yeah. that right to go into to a go different and do realm. What they want to like, do. Every female rapper though, it started it with it, I would say it started with Kim. It didn't start with Kim like far as female rapping, but getting mainstream. It started with Kim but it didn't last so long. Then Nikki got it. It lasted for what, about 10 years. Now yes Cardi. No. Mm-hmm. I think that um, cuz that's, that's another reason why people um respect Queen Latifah so much too is because she also but she had to uh, act to do that. She had to act to get mainstream. Right, but but she okay, Lil Kim had to jump into fashion. Yeah, they loved her. Like, mm. um, so Queen Latifah, you know, she was giving empowering bars. She was, you know, all about women mm-hmm. empowerment. And, you know, she didn't rely on her body. Right. Where she had questionable sexuality, and it was a taboo topic back then once that started leaking. Mm-hmm. But mm. she was able to flip it. She went into acting. She did her thing, made her money, started getting endorsements. She was the first female rapper to have her own um, line with makeup. Yeah. Right? With the Queen collection. Mm-hmm. You know, so she she broke down barriers with, as for female rappers in business. Okay, you're right. See All what right. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And But you did have the little Kim who was, the, who was able to um, jump in the ring with the boys and, you know, and, and spit hardcore while being sexy. At the same time. At right. the same time. And you have to give her her respect for that. Yeah. The issue was that she wasn't able to sustain it. Yeah. Um, I mean, besides her going to jail and that's what it is, you know, and I, so I can understand the contention when you have a Nicki Minaj who looks up to rappers like her who, who gave her roses and they'll say, well, yeah, you did it, but now I can do it, but I'm, I'm in rooms that you can't be in anymore. And I feel like that's what that, what that goes into the whole, I, I, I still to this day think it's like really the industry that does not allow women artists women, just women in general that they only be one at one time one at a one time one at a time and wow. now and it's it is at the so point pressure. yeah it's gonna be someone else back 10 years later Cardi's still gonna be there and then it's gonna be like oh yeah this new girl is gonna be popping and then she's gonna be feeling the same way I don't Nikki think so. That. Well, I think so. There's I don't, new artists every six months yeah, I don't think so I think that oh well, my I think, faster than I think that this so listen I think that every. <laughs> 
time happens in a pendulum, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. Things swing this way and then swing back the other way, right? Yeah. So I feel like this whole Nicki Minaj Kim situation, then can you coming in here? Oh. The Nicki Minaj Kim situation happened, right? And then you got this little eight years go by. Right, right, right. Ten years. And now you have um now you have the Nikki Cardi situation right. where it's kind of like, damn, this is like history repeating itself. Yeah. Except there's a difference because now you're watching them them competing, right? And we're, yeah. we're, we're tuned in. And then slowly but surely, these new girls are being introduced in. And you, yeah. There's... We've never had, we haven't had this many girls competing since back in since the, back in the day. So mm-hmm. whether or not it looks bad, or like I said, there's no such thing as bad press. And you also have to think about Hollywood. Everybody signs up for a role. When you get a contract, yep. Once you're contracted with a record label or whatever, they're already in rooms building your character for you. Like who, yeah. what piece do you play in this story? When Nikki came out and said, "Okay, well, they painted me out to be the bad guy," I that was, I feel like that was her acknowledging. Okay, so this in this story. Mm-hmm. In this Hollywood story, because if you pay attention, you know, there's like only 10 or 12 p- people at the top that we see all right. the time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, Beyonce was like a lead character. Kanye, Jay-Z is a lead character. Rihanna, Chris, they're, mm-hmm. they're lead characters in this. Oh, they Hollywood did. Oh, drama. Rihanna and B. Right. So Nikki was like, oh, OK, so this season I'm the bad guy in this reality show of mm-hmm. love and hip hop, young money or, you know, whatever <laughs> this is. I'm the bad guy. Cool. But that's not going to stop. What's happening? What's happening is I'm still going to secure these deals. Yeah. I'm still going to get these records. Yeah. I'm still going to be breaking these new girls in. I'm still going to get the respect I deserve. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be mad about it. But I'm still going to do what I came to do. And I think, I think people get so caught up in all the extra hype. And you have people like Cardi B who takes this stuff really personal. Mm. Yes. And, and like forget like this is a business Very girl. sensitive. When you get on these interviews, they're mm-hmm. going to take your words and chop it up because guess what? They have ratings because that's how they keep their lights on. Yeah. They have to draw people in. We see these headlines and they're, you know, skewed one way. That's because they need those clicks. Like we're watching her that's transition into yeah, we're watching her transition into a celebrity like a well household name and we're seeing it. We should not be seeing all this. Right. And I think it's because of social media too, but it's just because you put everything, everything on your Instagram live story. Now, if you can getting paid for this, let me know so we can just stop talking about it right now. So I'm like, okay, that's why. Right. That's why we're doing this. I feel like she's going to burn out though. I just feel like she's not emotionally ready. She Ooh. wasn't emotionally ready to mm-hmm. take on this stuff because she's, and she used to say it all the time, like, I'm not used to all these people being in my business. I'm not used to all these negative comments. I'm like, she's not what? used to that you never, Most like, people aren't though. Like, they got to be, you, every celebrity, every person has not mm-hmm. been famous their whole life. So you right. have to. That's why you have PR. You have people that, you know, that can help you get to any management, things right. of that nature. Everyone could is there for you, have a team for a reason. Well, yeah, my advice would be just to stay. She said she was going to stay. But I'm playing so like I'm playing like a, a small little clarinet, right? Not, not clarinet. Violin. A violin right now, because this is there's some people that's really going through some shit now. Right. And you worried about somebody talking crap about you or somebody changing your words around. Right. They want to be in your position, bitch. Like, yeah. Let them talk. Yeah. Like let let, let me be up let me be over there give me some rhymes and I'm over here rapping people talk about me mm-hmm. right I'm gonna be like oh yeah keep it talking because one thing my cousin always taught me and I stick t- to it I like when people talk about me that keeps me popping that keeps you relevant right mm-hmm. whether it's negative or not now I understand depending on what it is now yeah. if you're getting accused of assault Rape, I feel like I, yeah. yeah yeah that, that that's different but if it's over some stupid stuff. Stuff that's not even that's that that's not even that serious. Mm-hmm. They're trying to talk about me as a mother. Don't play with me. Listen, girl. Mm-hmm. Now we got blogs doing their jobs, and you over here saying, "Oh, these black blogs, black right. blogs." Y'all don't talk about white people. Y'all don't talk about the people, the actors and stuff. The actors don't be doing nothing. I really don't like the fact that. <laughs> excuse me, I didn't mean you. I don't make it. I'm new to that. I don't like the fact that. Um, Damn, Cardi, Cardi, make you go to sleep. <laughs> Because sis is tired. No, I'm just saying, uh-huh. like... <laughs> <laughs> she needs a nap. Right. right. Cardi needs a nap. She mm-hmm. needs a nap and to start over. She, yes. She's tired. And, I and like, I understand famous is not for everyone. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. that, like we all dream about, you know, making it big and being wealthy. That's, I'm pretty sure that's everyone's dream in some right. form or way. But if you feel like you cannot take it, then you may have to, like, sit out for maybe a year or two. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's going to really change anything. But I don't really think that... She needs to be in this room at this point in time in her life. She's still young. She just had a kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's the thing about that, too. I the kid look- stuff, I understand. If you want to get wild out of the kid stuff. Okay, no, even that, that's kind of annoying to me because, like, I'm about to make a point real quick. I hate when people are like, don't talk about my child. They child like 30 years old. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, I don't let people be like, oh, stop talking about my child and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. It's like, 
if they want to talk about your kids, let it happen. Because as we all know, remember back when mm-hmm. on One Six and Park and Karuchi had um, talked about Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy. I was yeah. gonna bring and that up. what did Beyonce do behind the scenes? She didn't say. She didn't say nothing, but she shut that shit down. Oh, she shut it down. No, not it down. But like, have you realized after that, One Six and Park was like nothing. Mm-hmm. Karuchi, like you know, basically her whole plight with that thing right. was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I feel like when that happens, you can do things behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, You yeah. don't have to put everything out on live and stuff like that. Right. And now another thing, too, I was going to say, like, okay, well, you have someone like Beyonce, and everybody knows at this point mm-hmm. my feelings on her. Um, shout out to Houston. But with the whole Blue Ivy thing and, and her and the hair situation, like, people went in on Blue Ivy's hair. She's a gorgeous little girl um, mm-hmm. now. I mean, I'm saying she wasn't gorgeous then, but I'm just saying the 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 tone is different now when you talk about the Blue Ivy, you know, the director, the creative director of Beyonce right now, <laughs> and choreographer, but the choreographer, mm-hmm. the producer, the writer, all of those things. <laughs> um, you know, people went in on 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 Blue, and Beyonce wasn't doing lives. She wasn't tweeting about how mad she was. But she a different. But you, she but is you, a different person. But though. you saw Blue more. Mm-hmm. And you saw her beautiful curly hair. Yes. And you saw her in the music videos being being a, a symbol of power because when mm-hmm. you're in those positions, you have to be able to you have to be able to face that adversity. And I was like, now what are you what are you teaching culture? Is that anytime somebody talks about her or says something negative to have an emotional meltdown, that is not strength. That's not being that's not a that's not a sign of strength. Mm-hmm. And being loud and boisterous and 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 and. Uh, hype all the time that just shows that we know where your weak spot is right. so when you have your real enemies they know exactly where to get you where to get and you? to knock you off of your game so if she was smart and if she had people around her that were smart they would have shut that live down so before it got screen we screen capture everything yeah her publicist should have walked in that room and like up oh, not today Mm-mm. nope not right now yeah you going on break give me your phones Mm. Changing these passwords, and if you're gonna do an interview, do do the whole thing where you where you tell us what not to ask you, or pull a Beyonce, and be like, um, I'm gonna do the interview on my terms, and we're gonna mm-hmm. do it with my production team and my publicist is right here, so we're gonna talk about what I want to talk about, mm-hmm. and before this goes on the air, it has to be cleared. Oh, her team team ain't built like that. They're not, but they should be. It's shown. It's obviously shown. It's showing. It's you know they're not built like that. They're built when it comes to her. You know, appearance. Her, the music. The music is amazing. And marketing I mean, it, and yeah, and appearances on red carpets and things mm-hmm. of that nature. But as far as like knowing, she looked how, good. <laughs> but she, she's a great package. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. Sorry, Cardi, but mm. maybe it's just not your time right now. Maybe you need to get a new team. <laughs> not you telling him to sit down. Like mm, it was. So do cute. like Nikki do. She got a whole new team because that team. Oh, when I tell you when that whole queen, the whole queen roll out. Hashtag win again. That's it. I was just so pissed. Get Black China's team. <laughs> oh, Black China's team. Ugh. They're nasty. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm like, I seen a little bit of how they was interacting when she was doing a little Wendy Williams interview. I'm like, oh, I, you would have been fired on the spot. But you she's nasty to me like that? too. But they're both. They're all in the wrong. Mm-hmm. Wait, I don't know if y'all were watching the same show. I was watching right, right. the way that they were coming at the guy that was brought on to be a publicist for her. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, understand. You want to protect your friend, mm-hmm. but when there is business and there's money involved and like you bring in you're bringing in an expert mm-hmm. let the expert in the room mm-hmm. be the expert the yeah. problem is that everybody wants to be in control and people don't play their roles well enough is what I, that's just what i was seeing and i'm just like how do you really want how if you can't handle having a team of four people mm. and you know letting everybody play their roles and checking people when they need to be checked it's going to be real hard for you to get a team of 15. It's going to be really hard for you to have to hold a staff meeting with 20 people um, who are helping to build you. It ain't going to work. It's not going to work. You know, so we'll see. But she's done so well so far. I mean, there are two shows under her belt now, right? With uh, this new show coming out, Tokyo Tony Finds Love ASAP. <laughs> Hot Granny Fall or whatever they call it. get the fuck. ASAP after this shit. Right. Okay, well. So, <laughs> shout out to Crazy Cardi. That's what we got. Hey, we had it on our board. Hashtag shout out don't. to Crazy Cardi. Well, no, not shout out, girl. You need to get Bill together, Khalees. Crazy Cardi. Get, Stop it, Bill because Khalees. I want to... <laughs> right, Bill Khalees. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, someday, um, if, Cardi, if you hear this, I don't know how you get stuff, but, you know, I still want to do a song with you. Um, I just think right now you should probably just... 
relax, take a nap. Take right. a take an the Ambien. Offset, do all the get work. some rest, mm-hmm. rest, 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 rest. Yes, <laughs> and then come back <laughs> fresh, renewed. Mm-hmm. You're a beautiful girl. We want to see you win. Yeah, um, just and she was killing it on Fashion Week Paris. Oh yeah, some of those looks were some serving. of those looks, some of those yeah. looks were not. Yeah. Like that whole Russian couch thing. Oh, I, I didn't like Mrs. Doubtfire. Scared the hell out of I me. Remember that. I remember that. That's going to be a Halloween costume. Watch what I tell you. <laughs> and it might just be mine. I may just go to the fabric store and like, whatever you got that looks like 1984, Yeah, I want it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to tie it around my head and make a... Oh. Mm-hmm. But we got to move on. We got to move on, yes. Because um, we're, we're almost an hour in. Time. Yes, we are almost there. Yeah. Oh, what else oh, we, we finna got? get deep. We finna get heavy now. Oh, okay. yeah. We got to talk about uh, the ex-Dallas police officer, Amber Geiger, found guilty of murder from Bothman Dean, Jean in his mm-hmm. own apartment. Yeah. So Geiger was off duty, but in uniform when she shot twice at Jean September 6, 2018, just before 10 p.m., striking him in the chest. Right. Right. So she lived on the third floor. And Jean, 26-year-old accountant, lived directly above her. And the two didn't know each other, of course. They didn't know each other? They didn't know each other. Hmm. Did she text him? Did... Right. Okay. We're well, mm-hmm. we going to get into that. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Let's say allegedly. The prosecutor said that Jean was watching television television, and eating ice cream in his living room when Geiger burst inside, scaring him. And they said the trajectory of the bullet showed that either he was getting up from the couch to cower in fear or um, to, you know, to get away. Right. Um, so she was found guilty on Tuesday, last Tuesday, mm. sentenced to 10 years in prison. 10. Now, she was up for, what was it going to be? It was going to be life, but they ended up giving her 10. <sighs> Lord. And also. 10 years for shooting a man in right, his right. own fucking apartment. Okay. Who was unarmed. Unarmed. Period. I and just <laughs> that's the fact like just that's enough. I made a mistake. What, what is it the crack? Is it the meth? And you seen co- you seen I, him eating ice cream watching TV, so he's not in like a when you burst it in there, it you think, like uh, Y'all think niggas breaking into your house to eat ice cream on your couch? I can't uh, here, Lord. I have a whole like I don't want to get go in. Go in, but I might she have to go in. Girl, but please. I might have to go in a little bit, okay? Because mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm quiet. I mm-hmm. rarely, but I'm have to go in. First things first, that I'm gonna get into. All right. Can we curse on here? Yes. Okay. First things first on this bitch. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> like I just, uh, it's bad enough that there's a deep rooted history in how white women tears have oppressed many marginalized people especially black people specifically and i just can't fathom the thought there was so much coonery that was happening in the courtroom mm. but that's i'm gonna put that topic on the side for mm-hmm. if no, you guys we, would do it individually we're talking about the coonies today we're gonna talk about that today yes but i'm gonna get on first of how this case is is getting is getting just really thin and like it's just not making any sense so the first thing is is that she was messing around with a married man mm-hmm. who was also a cop as well, who was also affiliated with on her team as well. Mm. So she's messing around with him. That's one thing. And if you want to be a hoe, like, be a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. you can be liberated in your own right if you want to be. Period. But no, there's going to be consequences <laughs> if you're a messy hoe. Right. Let's be clear. So she was a messy hoe because, you know, obviously you're messing around with a married man who's also in the same um, field, as you. field as you. And you know that you're thinking he's going to leave his wife. He's not going to leave his wife. Right. Most of them never do any damn way. Mm-hmm. So then you got a little mad. He was mad about that. And that's This is my theory that I'm talking about. She got mad about that because she went to, you know, she just came from sucking so much peen. So she comes Ooh. all the way oh, to. Lord. <laughs> yes, peen. She comes all the way to his apartment. Because they was having an affair, too. Because if you think about it, he was saying that they were saying that her that his door was ajar. With those doors, they're not regular doors. You have mm-hmm. a key fob that you need in order to, you, get, to, to get in. To right. get in. And if you leave it, you can't even leave it ajar because it's going to, it's like these it doors. It automatically are, closes. Exactly. It automatically closes. So in my theory is that either she already had a separate key fob or he gave it to her. Something of that nature, I don't know. But he didn't just leave it 
uh, unlocked. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were affiliated with one another in some form of expense. So she was already mad at the fact that the guy that she's messing around with, the married man, was not going to break it off with his wife. She goes there to get some more peen. So there's a whole scandal behind this. So you're saying that Botham was married and... But no, Botham wasn't oh. married. The guy that was on her, the correct, the officer, okay. he was married. She's messing around with him. Right. She goes to Botham's apartment, I guess, to talk mm-hmm. things out of her like that because they were having an affair. As and well. she probably thought that, you know what, well... One of these hoes that I mess around with, he's gone or whatever like that. Maybe he's going to, you know, take me and stuff like that. And he, he denied pr- her, too. He probably denied her, too. Like, oh, this is probably just a sexual thing. Like, I'm not trying to do anything with you because he hung around a lot of white people. Mm. He was around a lot. Of, like, he was very well endowed as far as, like, you know, who he knew and things of that nature. So it wouldn't surprise me that he messed around with white women. Um, but that's not really the case at this point. Right. She goes in there. I guess they get into a little argument. And... She shoots him because the guy, Joshua, that was across the hall from him, he says that he didn't hear her say those things saying, put your hands up. Joshua Brown, because he, he exactly. um, testified against her right. before, mm-hmm. and now he's got, he got killed. And he's got right. he's killed. So for her to say that, oh, I didn't know it was my apartment, bitch, literally there was like a whole red carpet in front of his doorway. Okay. Does yours have a red carpet? It's, no. Not even that. The kitchen's on the other side. Like, none of it's making sense. Right. Mm-hmm. So the late... So, See, this is everything we were talking about before we started taping. Mm-hmm. Like, the layout of the apartment is different. Mm-hmm. The welcome mat that you don't have, right? That should have been a dead giveaway. Where you parked your car. The smell, bitch, of the damn apartment. Right, the where, where you parked your car, you parked on a totally different level than where your apartment was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as a cop, now, first of all, I just got my CPR training like maybe two, three weeks ago. Okay. And I know that as a law enforcement officer, you have to be CPR tra- uh, certified as well. Right. So at any time that you fire off your your um, your gun to uh, bring down uh, an assailant or, or whatever, if you shoot them and they like they're losing their losing blood or whatever, you're supposed to supposed to provide CPR. Until an EMS arrives, you're supposed if you shoot them, you're supposed to call it in and you're supposed to try to keep them alive if they aren't dead because you can't pronounce them dead. The only person that can pronounce someone dead is the coroner or a doctor. You can't pronounce them dead and you have to keep them alive. Right. Because if he was just broke into your house, mm-hmm. it shouldn't have been that you wanted to kill him. It should have been that you were trying to get him to obey what you were asking him to do so you could take him to jail. That's mm-hmm. what cops are supposed to do. Right? How come you got no blood on your clothes, sis? Mm. There was no blood found on your on your clothes. So you just really, you really just, you really just shot this man. And I, I'm just sitting there like anybody with half a brain with most of the facts that were coming out during this case, like this is so bizarre to me mm-hmm. to watch to watch the characters in this this um, courtroom theater. <laughs> Like the bailiff, you're brushing this bitch's hair. Since when did bailiffs show emotion or compassion to any anyone that is a defendant? Right. Never. They didn't even show compassion to Joshua Brown mm. while he was crying. On it. Like when has when has it been done? And then at the sentencing or when the conviction came in, you got <laughs> the brother. Oh my God! Hip. The brother hugging. Her embracing her, mm-hmm. saying that he, I want, I want the best for you. I wish the best for you. And listen, I, I understand being being a person who wants to protect my own peace. Like I always talk about, protect your peace, and whatever you have to do to protect your peace, do that. Mm-hmm. And I do not believe that this man has to take up the the banner for all of Black America. I don't think that that weight should be put on any one person. However. Understanding the the way that this case is being publicized and the way it's being watched and the gravitas of this case, what this looks like, what this means and what it represents. To get your black ass up there. (laughs) No, talk, speak about it. And hug this woman, this white woman who unjustifiably killed your brother. Hell no. In cold blood. I don't know what type of points you're trying to get from that. Oh, you know, we can find, I want the best. No, I can get my peace um, without embracing you. I can forgive you mm-hmm. without embracing you. I can pray for you 
without having to embrace you because I don't want you to get that from me because you disrupted my peace. Yeah. And you're sharing you don't get, energies. When yeah. You, do that. you don't get comfort. You don't forgive her. Forgive for you. Yeah. I'm, I forgive but you. But I ain't hugging your for ass. For me, but I'm not embracing you. I'm not, I'm not extending comfort yeah. to you. Because you didn't think about that. You didn't think about my family mm-hmm. when you took my brother from me. You didn't think about my peace. You didn't think about my process. You didn't think about those things. So I don't owe you any of that. Mm. I don't. And I still can. I still can have my peace. I still can, can mourn and grieve and process without a public showing of compassion for you. And it is okay. We, black people mm-hmm. in America have been conditioned to always, you know, and I, I love Michelle Obama about when they go high, we go low. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's okay to say, fuck that. No, you went really low. Yeah. And I'm going to leave you where you are, but I'm going to tread on top of your ass. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to soar right now. I'm just going to tread on top of you while you're down on the low and move on with my and life. And we got people like Steve Harvey getting on his little radio show talking about some, well, sometimes, you know, we've been through a lot. Child. But sometimes we have to learn how to forget. No. We got to we can forbade for, him. How we to can forgive. How to we forgive, honey. We got to forgive. Why? Okay. I'm a, this is my problem. Why is it always up to black people, specifically for us to forgive everyone? We've been through so much shit, and we're st- it's a blueprint made for us. Like, mm-hmm. we're still in this blueprint as we speak. People yeah. think that because we mm-hmm. overcame this and a third um, throughout history or this timeline. No, it's still being prevalent, and we're so blind to mm-hmm. even see that we're still even being oppressed as we speak. And it's like, it's just annoying me. Like, why do we have to be the ones to forgive? Would that make us any better if we forgive? That's just showing that they can do anything they want to us. Because you You've know they're going to forgive you. So long. Be- because we have conditioned them to be forgivers. Mm. We've conditioned them to look. Be- I don't tell you. I- I- y'all, let me tell you. I love the Lord. He heard my cry, right? But when it comes to the tool of religion and how it was used yep. on the black Thank mind you. in Thank America, mm-hmm. this whole thing that we have to impress God by showing that we are compassionate because we want that same compassion. Mm-hmm. You, there is there, nothing you, there's nothing you can do. There's no tool you can use in, in the face of your oppressor that he hasn't already given you. You're going to forgive me because I told you to. Because if you don't, what is God going to think? Didn't mm. we tell you to forgive? Right? It's still a that's what I'm see- like. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, fuck that. Fuck it. Sometimes we have to be comfortable in in really owning our own space. And I just think that until black people can learn how to find peace mm-hmm. on our own in our with our own devices, things that are natural to us. You know, what I'm saying I can see some fuck shit and say, you know what, that was some fuck shit. I'm not fucking with you anymore. Mm-hmm. Or I'm not. Oh, I forgot we only have a limit. I'm not messing with you it's anymore. Okay. We done. <laughs> right. I'm not messing with you anymore. But I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. Right. I'm, I know how to move differently. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't have to entertain it. It ain't got to be a big, you know, I don't have to do all that. Because I know the, I know who I am inside and I know what I'm connected to. And that's what I, that's how I'm going to move. But this whole, this kumbaya thing, we are the world, you know. Right, right. I want world peace too. But I'm no dummy. Like, we got to we gotta quit being stupid about it. And stop shucking and jiving and thinking that <laughs> that we're gonna get moral points. No, really. And we have to lead with grace. Trying to get the house in heaven, right? And we have we because that's not how this works. We're in a game of survival, mm-hmm. and we need to understand that the, how we're playing this game. They've already been trapped set for us. There's a there's behavioral conditioning, like it's like s- switches and stoplights. Like, okay, when you get when this happens, we have to respond this way because we want to survive. Mm-hmm. When I see this whole black people like, oh, we got to hug them and embrace them and show them. We have to yeah, show like them that, that oh. show them how to operate in love. That's how we overcome oppression by showing them operating love. No, what you're showing them is they can continue to oppress you. Right. Exactly. And the only thing you're going to do is hug them. Now, there was something that came out that said that they were strictly like very religious. They were okay. Christian. So, I mean, it's that, some Christians, are, you know, they're, they're like that. They're okay. they, I'm really tired exactly. of like it's and that they did exactly what they were trained to do. Yeah, like okay, you're Christian and yeah, like I can be Christian, but I'm human at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And this is I'm I'm going to get there, but like Christianity was something that was sincerely forced upon Black people in yeah, general within right. America. Like you know what I'm saying? If you still are Christian, I grew up Baptist. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I I seen how it makes us like 
for religion is supposed to be for you. It's supposed to be for your peace. Mm-hmm. And I really don't like the fact that people, it's like become like a cult now. It's become like, oh, well, if you don't do some guys are going to love you. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you're supposed to, you come first, you know what I'm saying? Always. Before anything. And then God, that's, that's how, what I truly believe. Right. You but know? it's, but you know, when you talk about it, you, cause I think you said that twice on the show already, is that, you know, it's always been a cult. It's a, it's, I mean, that's the, the root word of culture. Mm hmm. Is cult, yeah, right, and it's about cultivating a uh, a unified mindset, a set rules of behavior mm-hmm. or moral code that people can operate under because it's also a form of control. Mm-hmm. And if you tell someone that this is these are the rules you have to live by, um, or you're going to suffer a physical death, and not only that, when you die, you're going to die again. Like I'm, com- I'm binding your mind now. Like damn, I'm mm-hmm. like even after this is over there's still a force or a power that's going to keep me from being free or happy. Like there's more consequence. It's a, that's psycho, that's psychological warfare, first of all. And that's how it was used. Christianity was spread in Africa to control those people. Mm -hmm. And now religion is becoming more socialized because people are waking up to saying, wait a minute, something about this ain't right. Because if there's, if there's something that I'm a part of that's teaching me to hate myself, Mm -hmm. which, all, which demoralizes me, which makes me operate um, in a, a false sense of, of humility or being humble, which is an oppressive word mm-hmm. because you have you literally choosing to lower yourself um, and not show up in the fullness because you've been trained to believe that you can't or that you shouldn't. Um, I think you're always going to you're always going to see this same pattern happening until people decide, wait a minute, we need to just stop this train. Because it's not going where it's not going where we thought it was going to go mm-hmm. for us. It's not yeah. going where we thought. And that's, I saw another article where a lot of African uh, women are are African um, uh, ADOS are, are re- re- returning back to African spirituality. Where it's like, let me let me just try to connect to God on my own real quick. Mm-hmm. Let me tap yeah. back into my roots and see what more code works for me. And being more free to try something else because being raised Christian, you are taught that there is nothing else. Yes. You choose something mm-hmm. else, then you are lost, and that's that's it. Mm-hmm. And that is as a child, that is a very traumatic experience. It's toxic. It is to feel that oh, if I step out this. It's like um, the electric tow line. Like, I'm, if I step outside this and be electric, I'm going to die. Like, that's what it feels like. Or mm-hmm. even question. You can't even question God. And it's like, God yeah. wants us to question. That's why he gave me a brain. Like. Right? <laughs> so, oh, so why, before we move on from this topic, too. Now, um, Joshua Brown was recently murdered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In connection to this case. What are your thoughts on that? What do you I think? I mean, happened? her people killed him. You, you know how so? these cops are. They work together. They, they, they. They understand that okay, yeah, well, she, well, this is our person. This, this is my girl, and you over here testifying. No, we going because you know the cops years. is a new form of gang. New, it been a gang after the Ku Klux Klan. First, for, mm-hmm. first of all, Ku Klux Klan members were our, they were cops and sheriffs, so mm-hmm. they've they been a gang. So yeah. that's nothing new. The poli- the law enforcement agencies that we have now started off as slave catchers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. investigators. So that's another like the history of police. And, you know, shout out to I have friends that are, are cops. And I think that, the, you know, and most of the black ones is kind of it's crazy. And that's something the white ones that I know, too. Like they do it because it really is a passion. Of, uh, uh, they're passionate about protecting and serving like they just mm-hmm. want to be able to help and really create safe environments. So I'm never going to say that all cops oh, yeah, and of are bad. Like, I would yeah, never yeah. I would never say that because there have been situations when I needed that kind of backup and I got it. But there's also been times when. Where I've had some really shitty experiences with law enforcement officers, and I was like, "Oh, your mindset is still on on that. You're you're in slave catcher mode mm, right now." That's mm-hmm. a good way to put it. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're in, you're okay. Well, you can, well check me then. Like that's I'm like, oh, well put me, well put me in my place then, and you wait on that ticket to be paid. All right? How about that? I've never had a bad encounter with a cop yet. I'll put that out there yet. No, but, I would, child, because yeah. I haven't right. either. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I'm from the South. I'm, I'm, um, you know, so, yeah, you know, it'd be like that. So I just feel like where was his protection, too? I see. Oh, yes, Jay, uh, Jay Lee. That's a really good question. After him getting on the stand and testifying against this per- this um, this young lady, one of the questions I even thought about, I was like, OK, well, is he going to witness protection? Because we're living in this. Right. This was that time, not offered? Yeah. During this Trump era of. The, Rep- the Republican Party or the right wing trying to be really like law and order. Mm-hmm. And we're always tipping that line 
of anxiety, like, um, how close to martial law are we? Because there's so much shit that's happening and our anxieties are, are really high. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what's going to happen. It could be an outbreak at any moment. Like, you need yeah. to be protected if you're speaking out against anything that's considered a long arm of this, of, of the government we have right now. Right, right. And I'm like, he should have had protection. Where was his protection? And why didn't he move? Because I would have moved that next day. Yeah, was day. that not offered? Yeah. But who's 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 governing that? The cops. I don't know. It's some shady shit going on. But I'm I I, I Always bet my, with this country. I bet my bottom dollar in the next couple of weeks they're gonna say that it was a black man that was, shot yeah, him. Probably. Or that it was it's it was gang related. related. It's gonna mm-hmm. come to light in the next I give it it shouldn't be like that, but I say the next five years. Probably even, you know, in less time than that. But I feel it's going to really come to like, because this case is just something's not right about it. It's not hitting. It's not making. It's something in my spirit that's telling me like it's something. This doesn't make sense. It doesn't it make doesn't. any sense. Like the whole timeline of events, like her yeah. thinking it's her apartment. Okay. And they said there was no drugs in her system. So because only. Who tested her? They did. Come on. Like, I mean, we've seen, we've seen like, this. And he got we shot know. in his mouth, which is basically, I guess, he got shot in his mouth, mm-hmm. which me- is a, another form of, like, I guess, to testify, like, you know, saying that, oh, you know, you're a snitch, so you want to, you know, tell on people. Yeah. So we're going to shoot you where, you know. Just we got, got shot, shot in, in the mouth. mouth. He got shot in the mouth. Wow. That's almost execution style. That's. Hmm. Mm. So. Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? What's this? State city. It was this in, this Texas, in Dallas, Texas. Texas yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So my Dallas, family's Texas. from my dad my dad's side of the family is from there and I'm just kinda Man. like Hey, you <sighs> it, it's anywhere. Yeah. You we can get it anywhere, obviously. It's it's this entire country. I mean, I didn't see something where the guy is going to jail for ten days for, for being late for, for um jury duty. Jury duty. <laughs> right. I'm well, like, well, we, we we got we gotta just we can't do nothing. It's too sus we, we all but that's the thing, like I think that we're in this state where we are kinda people are waking up. Like, hell, even the animals are waking up. I, I read an article yesterday. <laughs> pigs are using sticks for, as tools and digging holes now. So, um, yeah, they've never done that. So, I'm just like, we're we're in such a crazy time mm-hmm. when it as far as the vibrations. Like, everything is, the energies are getting really, really crazy. And I think people are becoming more aware. Yeah, it's getting real crazy. You can just sit there and can detain a fucking alligator, but you'll shoot a black person. I've seen that. I'm like, Damn. Okay, you got the damn alligator tied up. They about to go to bed. Okay. Because we're a threat. Keep that same energy. Our lives never mattered. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know. Alligators' lives matter more, matter more than us. But they did, and they do. Mm. It's not that our lives, we don't. It's, I, I no, think yeah, I get what you're saying. They mm-hmm. did. They did. They always, we've always been, mm. we've always brought that magic. Like, I hear black girl magic and black boy Joe. I'm like, but that's who we are as a people. And I think that when you do shine bright, and you can see what other people, and, and I, I think everything is either micro or macro, right? Mm. What you see in the micro, you're going to see it in the macro. When you see um, black people in their natural spaces, like, we are probably some of the most happiest. No, we're beautiful. I yeah. Like, <laughs> peaceful. We work mm-hmm. We work well together. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, we build community. We honor family. Like, we have, we are our own version of civilization. Just looking at some African tribes, just looking at our culture and, you know, being gaudy. We, t- we the things that made us who we are over here in America throughout time, they were denigrated. We were told mm-hmm. that it was wrong to be flashy. It was. We were told that it was wrong to be uh, for for our for black men to to be emotional or to be mm. um, anything but represent the beast that white people said that black men were. And that's another thing. When I talk about this toxic masculinity within the black community and right, how it right. relates to LGBTQ stuff, like you got that from a white man because he told you that you're a black man and you're a beast. You're supposed to be a beast. You're supposed to be aggressive. You're supposed to be blah, blah, blah. And you fed into that. When you look at other cultures and you see beautiful black men embracing each other, you see them adorned in beautiful jewels and you see like being expressive and loving with their children. Like th- we're so far disconnected with who we are and it's a it's a cultural disorder that we're seeing Mm -hmm. a cultural disorder within us and we're like you said we're still playing into this system and we want so bad it's like we want to win it we want to win this game so bad yeah and don't understand that we're not in a position to to change the rules in our favor so get out the game either get out the game or overthrow the people playing that's the only. I mean, that's the only way that you can that you're gonna be able to win it, and it's not gonna start with us. It's gonna have to. I don't know. That's all. But that's a conversation for another for another topic. For another but this, episode. But yeah. this whole this whole Amber uh, Geiger thing, we're gonna be watching. This is gonna be a case yeah. that we're gonna be seeing, getting updates for the next 
three to five years, just like we did with the girl who killed her daughter mm-hmm. or killed her baby. <sighs> I'm I'm just tired. Like yeah. I think, and I think a lot of people, black people across the board, we're just tired. Even ones that yeah. don't express that, we're just legit, like legitimately, like tired. Like it's just it's just something that we feel it's going to keep happening. So, like, a lot of people, like, I can understand why they give up. Not saying that is right. But they're but, exhausted. But they just mm-hmm. exhausted because we've been fighting for, it's, once we fight for something, it's like, shit, we got to fight for this next thing. It's mm-hmm. like, it's always, it's always something. It's always something to fight for, and we're tired of fighting. Yeah. But, but my thing is, why are we tired? We shouldn't be tired. We should not be tired. You shouldn't be tired to fight for something that you know that you should already have, or that should be, you know, ordained to you. But, Cause it seems rigged. That's why they stop. That's why they. It seems like all right. Well, there ain't nothing we could do. We done tried everything we could did. We done did everything. We done went to this person. We done did activists. We done did all these. What is it? Um, uh, rallies enough. and it's all that. It's not enough. It's like it's not enough. We have to put our people. Got to be put in power for but things to gonna, really. It's a race war that uh, everybody keeps saying this, but a race war needs to happen. Like that's literally the only thing, low key, that would mm-hmm. kind of help. But when you think about a race where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when we get to I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to I don't want to kill nobody. Because people are afraid to die and mm-hmm. people don't want any blood on their hands. But um, that also comes with social conditioning because yeah. w- when we do that, then we fall out of God's graces. Right. We're not supposed to kill oh, yeah, anybody. Yeah, you can't kill anybody. You can't hurt. Nobody. Well, that's why However, much, that's our whole the whole the whole first mm-hmm. part of the Bible was about this little tribe of Jews, of black people going into other people's spaces shooting uh, killing them setting their shit on fire raping their women mm. taking their stuff and then moving on to the next town and doing the same shit over and over and over again until they built an the empire is that the old testament that's what it said oh but that's the old testament mm-hmm. i mean it, but the new one is right not. the new one is about you know jesus bringing mm-hmm. love all, all this kind of stuff that's what the that's what the greeks were spreading in africa mm-hmm. while doing the exact same thing from the old testament invading spaces mm. yep except they did it in a different way We'll be friends with you, and they want to kill you out, and they want to take all your stuff. <laughs> the same thing they did over here with the Native Americans, right? Oh, we're befriending you. Oh, we're you know trying to take out these new spaces, mm-hmm. but we're going to give you all our diseases. And if you don't give us this land that we're trying to purchase to you from a nickel, we're just going to kill you and take it, and then we're going to claim it. We have to start thinking it's about the same. It's the same thing. The same thing. Child, don't speak the truth. They're going to shut us down. Speak the tr- well. Whatever. <laughs> I ain't got time to lie. You're going right. to get this truth. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. But we gotta move on because this will will go into the. Shoot, we might have to have an after show, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's yeah. Um, so let's change the subject a little bit. Let's talk about (sighs) now. You know about this? What's up with this Amber Seals thing? Who Amber Seals? Okay, so apparently Amber Seals was kicked out of a Black Emmys after party. Mm-hmm. Oh, Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals. Amanda. Amber, what did I say? Amber Seals, Lord. Amanda oh. Seals. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. Um, and I think it was about. They said it was about Issa Rae's publicist, and mm-hmm. you know she went off on Twitter about it. And then one of the co-stars, I can't remember his name. He think he plays the the character Jay, the tall, bright skin with the beard. Mm-hmm. And he said, "You can't be an asshole to people and then expect them to hang out with you." You know. I want to know where that came from because I mean, she they does. Say that she's a bitch on set. They say that she's very. Oh. She's not. They said that she's not nice. Oh, so behind the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes that she's not. Mm-hmm. She's kind of like nice, nasty. I see selfish. that she's been traded from like New York to like LA now because like New York they just couldn't take how she you yeah. know was moving around there and how she addressed when she's on the, when she's in the news and how she addresses the other people that have different opinions. Mm-hmm. I'm like okay, I get it. Like I get that you're like you know you're this pro. What you would say pro black? She's, she's not. Black. She's, she's not, not for black women. She's only for herself. Oh, they well. said that. Well, shoot, with social media, the way I see it, because I don't really follow up on her like that. Mm-hmm. That's why I really asked you for this. That's why I you know, asked mm-hmm. you to do the topics. Um, but I do kind of see that with her, where she she could be a little nasty. Mm. Nice nasty. So so now that it's behind the scenes. But don't you get that stigma all the time with black women sometimes? That they're the whole black the bitch syndrome? Yeah. I like, do hate it, but mm-hmm. to be, but no tea, no shade. Like, even in working in Hollywood, you mm-hmm. have to... Black women are have to fight for certain things in ways that their mm-hmm. Caucasian or other colored minority women don't have to because they're seen as a novelty and they're, they're protected and they're coddled into yeah. certain things. And anytime that a black woman demands, um, demands to be treated with respect, anytime she demands to be treated fairly 
um, and not to be played with. She's right. labeled as a bitch. She's ang- labeled as angry. Anytime she uses the same tone that maybe I would in a situation where I'm like, no, this is what I said and this is what I meant and this is what I want and this is what you're going to give me. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, because I'm a boss and you're going to respect that. But if a woman does it, she's a bitch. So, so they really did not have her in that dang party. Right. I mean, she was there, but she, I mean, they didn't want her there. So, oh, uh, but I think that's because they said that she was also acting nasty there too. I was trying to pull up the article. I think well, I seen said her little she, live when she was talking about. I was like, well, that, I mean, news correspondents don't act like that too. That's another thing. If you're in a black space and you're still getting called bitchy and nasty, then there's a problem. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I mean, and I just like Amanda Seals only because she was a journalist, mm-hmm. yeah. and I looked up to her as a black woman who was a journalist as mm-hmm. well. So, um. Yes, she had like the stigma where she was for black woman. And I'm pretty sure she is in some some spawn of way that she's for black woman, but yeah. she's only for herself and not even for just black women, for black men in general. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So but if you're in a black space and you're still and you have to get kicked out, I think the problem is uses because there's rarely ever a time where, you know, there's a whole bunch of black people in one room and yeah. then there's somebody in there that's causing a problem. Yeah, even Wendy Williams get into into, into, exactly. st- into parties. And, and she'd be the main one talking <laughs> about everybody who's at the damn party. Uh-huh. So it's like, what do you... It's something about you mm-hmm. that people just don't feel comfortable around. She got to watch in that because I think she's she been on the reel for a little bit. I think that's what they're trying to... Trying to put a man... Oh, trying to put her there. Cause trying she to put did, her in on the reel? I've seen her in a couple episodes on the reel. I don't watch I want to say shit. she might be doing that. So my thing is like, uh, you want to do... Do you want to do this entertainment news? She don't need to be on t- nothing like the real because she's gonna say things that because half the real's audience is white women. Child, they looking way. for a Tamar. And she's I not think gonna. She give, might. She might give it to them. She's gonna give Tamar, but she's gonna give revolutionary Tamar. <laughs> revolutionary so she's not Tamar. gonna give the Tamar that you know uh-huh. that we want. The shucking and jiving Tamar. Right. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Oh, what you mean shucking and jiving? You gotta explain that now. <laughs> you gotta, wait, hold on, wait one second. I had to put my earphones, my <clears throat> headphones back on. What do you mean? You mean like a shucking and jiving version of Tamar? Because yeah, no, she's not going to give that. No, I'm saying Tamar. Tamar doesn't shuck and jive. She shucks and jive in a sense of what no, white people want to see. Okay, so wait, Tamar is Tamar, and because and because white people like her character. Say it in the mic. Oh, sorry, she got me riled up now. Because <laughs> if nothing else, all right, now I'm a Nippian. No, I but I am Tamar. a Tamartian. Okay, I so what I'm gonna say is Tamar is Tamar. White people like it because they they're attracted to us when we're in our element. Like they like they look at us entertaining in an entertainment way. When you're loud and you're rambunctious, when you have the Cardi B personality, you know Tamar loves Cardi B. You know because it's you know it gives that that over the top energy. But I'm not gonna call her no shuck and job because that's who that's who she is. And white people are attracted to that. Amanda ain't got that. Amanda doesn't have that personality, but that's what's missing from the real, and that's why people don't watch it like they used to. No, that's no. I'm not even mm. gonna lie. No, she was she. I'm not even gonna lie. She made the real because of who she is. I just had to had to jump in and, and defend. No, defend her. <laughs> sorry. No, like I'm not saying when I say chicken driving, it's from like a funny way, but it's like in a sense, it's like with mm. Tamar. She was she was being herself, but it's that loud, boisterous black mm. woman stereotype that a lot of white people love about mm. black women. Mm. And then it got to the point that, from what my theory is, is that none of the ladies on the road had anything to do with her being left off the show, mm-hmm. which is a fact in my opinion. Mm. But I also believe that they it was getting too much. Or okay, you're being too black. You know what I'm saying? Because you have Lonely Love, she's on there, mm-hmm. and then you have Tamara, but they dumbed down who they are in a sense. Just for the space that they're, they're in, so I feel like it was mm-hmm. too much. She was being herself, but it's still the playing on that stereotype they want. Like Tiffany Haddish, who I can't stand. Like, I'm sorry, but she does it on purpose. Tiffany Haddish do do that though. Like she, I mean, I, if if you sign of, of that, I do feel like Tiffany Haddish does pander. A, a tap dancing when mammy. She, when she no, sit she there was at it. that Met Gala and with the chicken, I got I brought my chicken in my purse. I'm, I'm like, girl, that was unnecessary. Why did you have to do that? But that's a role. Is that, is I that told a y'all, Hollywood. This is a show. Entertain the entertainment industry is an elaborate production, and every role that you see, every person that you see in mainstream media is playing a role that they are under contract to play. Remember, anytime you see them, you are playing a role. You have to show up in that role. The moment you stop playing that role is the moment you get replaced. Pay attention. So this is the team, this is the people behind the scenes. I'm trying to listen. And it's, I mean, so 
enough about the, Tiffany Haddish. We can t- talk about her another day. Congratulations on the new show. Um, she's replacing Bill Cosby in Kiss of the Darkest Things. Um, okay. S- right. Okay, girl. And but back to the real. Okay. Um, Tamar wasn't. Tamar brought lots of that show, but you also mm-hmm. have to think about what time they come on and t- on on the air and who their audience is and where they were trying, like what the audience they were trying to steal. Because if I if I'm if memory serves me correct, they were they were also competing with the the talk on CBS. Yeah, they were. They right? played at the same time. At the no, same- they, no, they don't. They they were Which, competing with them though. They because you know they moved their slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think they were competing with the talk. It wasn't the, the View. Was it the No? I don't now, think the View and the Real uh, plays at the same time. The view oh. right right now. Yes, I gotta check. We'll see what okay. comes. So yeah. you have to think about demographics and ratings. Like, which audience are you playing to, mm-hmm. and which 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 version of woman is at home watching this? Yeah, because most of the women that would watch the real to watch a Tamar and a lot like that kind of banter is at work. I'm sorry, I'm watching the view. Like, <laughs> and they play at the same time. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I don't watch it either. Well, based on your interest. Yeah. But I'll watch the Wendy Williams show. I mean, I oh, but used that's before. To. I definitely watch the show that Tamar has gone on. Yeah. Has had high ratings. Yeah. Whether it was whether it was the real, whether she it was dancing, dancing with the stars, and she can sing. whether it was um, what's the other show she did, Celebrity Big Brother, and I think it's because <laughs> people people yeah. do like her personality. We say it's too much. Black people say, "Well, I, she just do too much." It's like, no, she doesn't do she doesn't do too much. She doesn't do the most. It's just that you're embarrassed for that to be what's being spotlighted because we we have been conditioned to not accept and embrace that we can be all things. We can be all things. We can be rambunctious. We can be calm. We can be mm-hmm. collected. And then it could be anything you want, but it's right. yeah. I, I feel like with Tamar, it is more natural. But when we do get into the Tiffany Haddishes, and then it's like it's a, coonage. Yeah, but they have to do but that for that people. check. And you also have to think about people's backstories mm-hmm. too, because listen, when you have and because <laughs> Tamar would ever bring no crab leg and no chicken wing to no damn press or yeah, and right. it's like Tamar was always like that. So mm-hmm. it's like if they always was like that, then yeah, that's why when I see people like uh, what's the name Azalea Banks talking about calling. Um, uh, Lizzo, the new modern day mammy. Mammy, I, you know, Azalea Banks like, is an attention whore too because her music's not selling like it should be. But mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Yeah. when you've been, when like I said, pay attention to people's backstories too. When I look at a Tiffany Haddish as a comedian, or when I look at people like, um, like even Taraji B Henson and some of the roles that she's had to play as she moved into moved up in her career, it's like you know, our Madonna, the extremes that they have that they go to in their careers. Yeah, I'm like these people were were fucking broke busted down like tiffany was sleeping out of her car and i can kind of relate to that because i moved to new york i i got sold this package yeah and i got here and it was it was it wasn't that yeah and you know so when you're sleeping and you're changing out a car when you're washing up in in hotel bathrooms and you know you're trying to figure out like how sure how am i gonna eat or you know, do I need to go in this in this Seven mm-hmm. Eleven and and steal? Like when you've been in that space, when you get an opportunity to start making money and start making real money, you gonna you, do it to the fullest, bitch. I'm, what, what tap you dancing? Need, what you need me to do? I wear a size thirteen. Look, I, I mean, and some people, some people are like are proud, and that's good to be proud. You know, it's sad, but they'll realize it in the end. I mean, like they yeah. used to say, you know, work is may not be honest, but it pays the bills. Like yeah. so, it's not like. She's gonna not even just she, but people that are doing if they are mm-hmm. you know they are tap dancing, right. you can't dance forever. So you have to come it's to. It's gonna a point, burn out. But it's it, gonna burn yeah. out. Right. You know, you're gonna get tired. And I mean, that's look, when you start preparing yourself, like yeah. to do other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, well, we'll when see. it comes when it comes to that, um, last thing that I want to bring up is just like a, I guess a trailblazer, not a trailblazer, but like a little shout out to dear white people. Is renewed for its fourth and final season. Yeah. Fourth and final? They announced it's going to be the fourth and final fourth season? Fourth and final, yes. It's about time. I'm going to be done with Netflix after <laughs> that because uh, y'all done got rid of so many black shows. This is the, literally the last one. Are and they going to have it like a Dear Black People? You mean Dear White uh, they better Dear not. Black People? <laughs> they did that with like the last episode of the, of the third season and it was kind of like switched around to see how it was cool. But no. if they do a Dear Black People, I'm going to be like, look, child. No, black Twitter's gonna be up in flames. Mm. But we're gonna watch it so we can comment on it. Mm-hmm. It's gonna have high ratings yeah. because that's what we do. Black people are the um most active consumer base in America. Oh yeah. Most. And that's why they're able to um like I, I mean we said that on the first show that I was on with you about the um whole H and M thing. Like yeah. we get the money and we spend it. And we get we have time to give the attention, we're gonna give it. Like 
That's what we do. Yeah. Even with the Popeye's chicken sandwiches. <laughs> and that, that I mm. didn't get a chance to I eat. I did not even eat it. Because... Mm. Sold out. I've been eating McDonald's chicken sandwiches. Every place. <laughs> the McChickens. <laughs> oh no, bitch! The buttermilk. Like. Oh, girl. Oh, the real. Oh, you she's, is. The, she's the five dollar and forty nine cents uh, chicken sandwich. Girl, please, I get a McChicken with cheese. I don't care. That's a dollar. I need pickles on my sandwich. Uh, no, I don't like pickles. <sighs> we definitely ain't eating no Chick Fil A though. Chick Fil A is done. Chick Chick Fil A got canceled. Oh. Oh. I don't know. I've only eaten them once. I didn't get the hype. I had their chicken nuggets and I didn't like them. I used to eat Chick Fil A all the time when I used to work. You got to get the cheese sauce with it, like the melted cheese sauce, and I get the fry. Oh, I feel. I feel. I might relapse and get it again. (laughs) Now the waffle, the waffle fries look really good. (laughs) Waffle fries. You if you get the cheese sauce with the Polynesian sauce though. But you can buy those at Walmart and make them yourself. Well, Mm, we're not gonna do it. That's too much work. (laughs) It's horrible. (laughs) Good luck on your weight loss. Oh well, first Ooh. of all, well, honey, Bloop. honey, I have not been eating that no fast food in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Cooking your own food also helps with because <laughs> right. all this other stuff that we're eating. You've been eating Voja food, girl. Uh, uh-uh, they done changed the meal plan, honey. Oh, I need to go in there, after yeah, honey. This. I got, I can go to the food. I can go to the uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts and uh, and the G Sub unlimitedly now because I'm um, upperclassman. Oh, well, let me go. Well, let's go in there after this. I want to see what they did. I'm gonna go too. Oh, see you. Right, right. Do you have a go. guest wipe? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh! I can't. Oh, I can't go in with a guest wipe. What? I, what that mean? A guest wipe into what? That's cafeteria. Yeah. Well, that's Vulture. Yeah. I mean, I can do a guest wipe in Vulture. That's what I'm saying. First of all, it ain't nothing changed. It's the same thing. The Vulture stayed the same. Wait, what changed? Are you the talking meal about? plan? Meaning that okay, so we get two thousand dollars for like Vulture and stuff like that. And we get one hundred and fifty for um, Flex. Now, if you're upperclassmen, you can update your payment so that the whole thing is for Vulture, Dunkin' Donuts, G Sub. You're lying. Yes. Oh, I left when I when everything. Yeah, that 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 started like last semester. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, come on, NJC. Oh, and, and in the food truck place too. But even but sometimes the food truck. Well, y'all got yeah. your own food truck. It, it, it's Ooh. like a company that comes. It's two. It's College one on is the side. changing, y'all. Yeah. Honey. I used to eat. Nice to be on. I used to eat. Mm. Eat. That's all you can do because yeah. you'd be stressed the fuck out. Right. You know <laughs> all you can do is eat. Like. Right. Oh my yeah. goodness. This, well, was, this is a good episode, guys. I'm so glad that you came on. And come again, yeah. please. No, I am. I, I'm so happy I'm yes. here. And like, it's always a... I enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, it's always a good I love the doll. Yes. He's Thank like... You. First of all, I was sitting here. I don't even realize. But I was like, okay. Everything he's saying right now is like touching me. Because mm-hmm. you gain from different people's perspectives. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, we all learn from other people so it's like certain things that i wasn't aware of you helped bring to light you too like yeah. i love some of the points that you made and this was a really really good conversation and i can't wait for us to do it again yes, yes very soon okay and that's it for this show hope you've enjoyed the show and until next time i'm your host darren green and this is the darren green show signing out 